and we developed a company subsidy BOP control system and uh, it, it evolved you know, over a period of time from uh, just a plain vanilla with hoses with, and hoses and valves and with electric and multiplex and so I mean it just evolved and uh, fortunately I was uh, involved in it because uh, we were knew the customers very well and we had we did have the best system and it looked like we had a first in everything except personal pain which bless his heart is good in uh, he developed the first BOP control system in conjunction with Texaco and we came up with the second one and Hydro came up with the third one Cameron the fourth one uh, and it was over a period of five years I guess. Now was it the first one you developed was that with Blue Water One? Or Blue Water One, right. The, the, the 3000 PSI? Yeah, 3000 PSI system, but Blue Water One was the first uh, subsea control system, but it was a non retrieval type. It just had hoses running down there. And uh, after that we had developed uh, the, the electro-hydraulic system where just electricity operating a valve on the floor, then we a multiplex system where we Instead of having a whole bunch of wires going down there, let's say 50, 60 wires in a hydraulic hose, we had two, maybe three wires in a hydraulic hose going down. Cut the cable way down in diameter, cost, everything. And uh, handling was easier and so forth. And we finally, we got that, uh, that pretty well perfected out and Sedco used it, uh, Global Marine used it, uh, the French, uh, I can't think of the... Total, yeah, Total used it, and uh, Italians, type in. And Paul said you might have some stories about Mr. Mr. Fort with uh, Total, the Fort. Oh, gentlemen, <laughs> he was a super guy, but he, he came up through the ranks, I guess, and when uh, I had my quotation there, and he had a, I didn't have a total because I had options, so he checked up all options he wanted, and he got his, head machine was mechanical. <laughs> and what happened? <laughs> some, some guy, they used to do it all the time. They changed the numbers on this ad machine because he couldn't do it, you know, without looking. And he would add that thing, and when he had that, <laughs> they couldn't believe the price. <laughs> but they do it on on money and on on. He had an ad machine on the rig, Italian drill pipe. Sometimes it'd be in a hole, you know, twelve thousand feet, and he tied a pipe and come up with seventeen, twenty thousand foot of pipe. No way to get in the hole, you know. But he couldn't figure out why it come up that high. <laughs> but Gilbert. <laughs> He was, he was just a super nice guy. I worked with him for about three or four or five years or something like that, then he finally died, but he was a good guy. He was kind of like the Frenchman you see in the movies. Had a mustache, a lot of hair, and always smoked a Giton cigar, cigarettes. Stink like hell, you know, <laughs> but strong. But he's a super nice guy, but he looked just like when you picture somebody, in, a Frenchman in a movie, you know. Yeah, like Claude Rains and Yeah, something like that, yeah. And it, <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I be, we became good friends, let's put it that way. Yeah. But, um, and uh, when, when he bought that system, uh, they had, you know, his price was one of the big factors. So we had some underwater make and break electrical connectors, which were kind of like, a, I don't know how, you, how would you describe them, but they, they really economical. The Invector cable here in Houston had a real good stainless steel connector with an O-ring seal where uh, you could make it and underwater, break it underwater, and it had no problem, but it cost, cost about $300 a piece, those other cost about 15 you know. <laughs> so one day I called up our uh, rep in Paris, uh, I got a representative, I said, uh, get Mr. Floor and get him for lunch at the airport tomorrow, I'm gonna catch a flight to Paris, we'll have lunch, and I'm trying to sell him these connectors. It wasn't so much to increase the sale, but the reliability of the system, you know. <laughs> it was, so uh, I got a plane, I flew to Paris, had lunch, tried to sell him the system. He said, well, how much more, Joe? I said, I saw it. He says, too much. I said, stay with the others. So I said, God. <laughs> <laughs> so I got back on the plane, flew to Houston. I just went to had lunch, come back. You know? <laughs> but anyway, you know, so uh, because they worked. <laughs> they worked. And he, he run that system for about uh, three or four or five years that I'm aware of that uh, I can recall. And it never, never had a problem with those connections surprised the heck out of me, you know, because I thought surely it would fail. Because you get them on the surface, they were fairly pliable, pliable, but you put them down below in 32, uh, 33 degrees of water, they become stiff, you know. And the uh, general principle thing was it's at a 
you had the metal stem or the uh, rubber deal went over it, uh, squeezed down and squeezed the water out. Well, I figured if it got hard, uh, it, it wouldn't do it. Way. It was short out. Yeah. Uh, but it did. Worked fine. <laughs> <laughs>